Craig here on the third floor. Welcome to episode five, where Ray and I break down how Jacob Lynch and the Honeypot crew work in Malifaux third edition. Don't forget to rate and write a review for us. You know you're our favorite listener, and this will help us find more people almost as cool as you. Enjoy the episode. There are few things better than sitting at a table, unplugging, and going to battle with some friends. Welcome to another episode of Tabletop Talk. If you're looking for strategies, reviews, and tips on everything related to board games, card games, and miniature games like Malifaux, you are in the right place. This episode is a direct port from one of our YouTube videos. Be sure to subscribe to the Third Floor Wars YouTube channel. The link is in the show notes. Howdy, folks. Craig and Ray here on the third floor. It's time to talk about the 10 Thunders. Quick disclaimer. Uh, when we filmed this, the uh, M3 was still in open beta, so some of the details we talk about might change, but thematically everything should mean we're about the same. It's time to go to the casino and talk about Jacob Lynch and the Honey Pots. So first, let's talk about Jacob Lynch. Okay. Um, you've declared 10 Thunders. Yep. You're going to bring Jacob Lynch. What should I expect to see? You are going to be suffering from a... Not condition, but a status effect known as brilliance. Okay. You're going to be suffering from a lot of it, and I'm going to make you suffer for suffering from it. <laughs> so that's something that you put on me, right? It is. So a, I it, gain brilliance tokens? You gain brilliance tokens. It is their main thematic ability, aside from their keyword, which we'll talk about, or their keyword ability, which I'll talk about in a second. And Jacob's job is to abuse that. Okay. So he has... Not as much offense as you might think, but more than he lets on. And okay. I, I know that's kind of a dichotomy of statements to say, but it's because his melee attack is basically I give you brilliance. Got it. You might take some damage. You reveal cards off the top of your deck, and if mine's higher than yours, you take like a two points of damage or something. But it's that's not what you're trying to right. do with him. He's got a gun, it's two, three, four, some nice triggers on it. Again, not really what you're trying to do with him. What you're doing with him is you're nuking. Okay. He has an ability called Succumb to Darkness, and it nukes you for the number of brilliance tokens on your character. Gotcha. And if I kill you, I get to summon Honeypot minions. Oh, wow. Okay. So it's kind of like uh, Sonya's ability with burning. Right. Same kind of concept, except I'm getting the Honeypot. And... Stacking brilliance is kind of what you're trying to do with him. His defensive ability is purely based off of you having brilliance on the model. Um, he himself is one of those pieces that you're using as kind of a support piece until it's time for him to come out and murder two models in an activation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he's kind of, it sounds like he's, he's setting up for, for a nuke on his side. Mm -hmm. um, and I assume when we get to the crew, we're going to find out that brilliance does a lot more than just allows him oh, yeah. to nuke him. So that's great. Um, how vulnerable is he? He's extremely vulnerable. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's one of the things that's really, that's that's one of the challenging aspects of what to play with him because his gun's only an eight inch range. His nuke, I think, is only six inches. So you got to get close to use it. But his only real defensive ability is that if you cheat near him, you take damage. And if you have brilliance, you're on negatives to hit him. Okay, gotcha. So that's really kind of all he has. So you've got to be very careful. He does have a pulse out heal, for, but I don't think it, it targets him. It's just to bolster his buddies. Uh huh. Um, so, uh, but he does have a really neat keyword that can kind of sort of help with this. And the keyword is, or sorry, not keyword, but ability called rig the deck. And that is the signature ability for the honeypot. And what it does is every model in his keyword has rig the deck plus X. Okay. And what that allows you to do is for each, you know, for whatever that number is, you'd look at the top card of your deck, kind of dr draw it into your hand, and then you can place any card from your hand back. Uh, back into the discard? Back on top of the deck. Oh. So you get to see what's coming, and knowing what you're going to do that turn, you get to determine how you're going to do things. You're literally stacking the deck. You're literally stacking Got the deck. It. So, Got like, he has rigged the deck, too, so you would draw the top two cards of your deck and then take two cards from your hand and put it back in any order you want. Got it. So if you're, like, and this is really good for certain niche situations, like against models that you can't cheat or there's penalties for cheating, you'd be like, well, can't cheat this anyway, put these two 13s on top. Got it. Um, but it's also really good, like, if you have abilities that have low cast that you didn't want to have to flip a 13 for, you only needed a 5, you can put that 5 on top right. and be like, right. all right, that's the card I'm going to go for. Or if you know you're going to be on negatives to an attack because you're distracted or something like that, you can be like, I'm going to put two moderates on here to increase my chances. So there's a lot of cool tricks you can do with it. Very, very cool. All right, that's Jacob Lynch. 
So we're talking about a honeypot crew, and it got, mm. I think the first thing we have to talk about is the totem. So talk to me about Hungry and Darkness. Hungry and Darkness, a.k.a. Huggy. The affectionate, like, you know, creature of death, doom, and destruction that has entrapped poor Jacob Lynch. And he is every bit as devastating on the table as you might think he is um, in the fluff. So he's got a high-end high end damage track, mm -hmm. 246, incorporeal, terrifying, hard-hitting henchmen. Uh, the things that make him extremely dangerous are he's got built-in triggers to give brilliance on everything he does. So right. if he hits you, you're going to get brilliance. He has an obey that has the suit built in oh, wow. that gives out brilliance in addition. Wow. So that's a thing. Um, and uh, he's got crit strike on his melee attack because... Why not? So that top end becomes seven all of a sudden. That top end can become eight all of a sudden. Yeah, right. Because right. he's, he's a henchman. He's a henchman. Wow. Yeah, so if you really need to wipe out a model in a single hit, you can pull it off. Sure, so sure. It's it's costly, Yeah. but hey. Yeah. How many models can say they top end at eight damage and, you know, just be like, what? Sure, sure. Um, and his bonus action is absolutely insane because the whole concept is you're spreading brilliance around your opponent's crew. And you mentioned, like, well, the crew must use it for things. Here's one of the things it uses it for. He has a six-inch pulse that removes the brilliance off every model in range. Okay. For every enemy model that he does that, he heals one, and they gain slow. Oh, jeez. Okay. Wow. So that's just that's, insanity. Yeah, that's tough. That's um, tough. Add into the fact that... One of the triggers in Lynch's gun says, place Hungry Darkness in base contact with the target. Oh, okay. And you have a really, really powerful model that can just inter ruin your day very quickly. Right, so you, 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 <laughs> the, the extra bonus of getting shot by Lynch is you get a Hungry Darkness, right? Yeah, you get, you get a warm hug. Wow, and of course I could stone for that suit if I was playing Lynch, if Absolutely. I really needed that to Absolutely, happen. Absolutely, Okay. Yeah. Uh, how about other Honeypot models that are of note? Um, well, offense, is there other offense other than... Uh, yeah, there, there's a lot of offense in this crew. There's okay. a lot of offense and there's a lot of utility in this crew. This All crew right. has some of my favorite mechanics and models in the game. Um, we'll start with uh, my three favorite models, which are the Illuminated, Kitty Dumont, and Beckoners. Okay. So you mentioned hitting. What yep. else does hitting? Well, Illuminated are your thing. They have a shockwave, which is obnoxious. Yep. That's on a, like, it's a move 13. So you, so typically you're going to need seven, eight. Higher end card, yeah. You know, to get through it. And it pulses out two damage and brilliance. Wow. Okay. So that's a thing. Their melee attack is a two four five or a two three five, something like that. That's pretty good. Pretty decent, but they also have a trigger on there that allows them to remove brilliance off of themselves or off of an enemy to increase the damage by one. Okay. So suddenly they're min three. Yeah. And to top it off, they have like armor regen and they start with brilliance on them, so you're guaranteed to get some of that damage out. Got it, got it. Um this is actually one of the things you can do with Lynch is you can have Lynch charge into like one of your illuminated and slap them with his melee attack and be like, here, have two brilliance. Sure. Which, Why not? Which they're going to definitely do. Which they're definitely going to be able to use. Got it. Um, so there's your extra damage if you really want it. Um, talking Talk, utility. Utility, yeah. Beckoners have a lore. Okay. And they have a ranged attack that puts distract that gives out distracted and brilliance. Uh, their lore is absolutely obscene though because uh, it's got two triggers baked in. Um, off the, off the same suit. Sure. Uh, that allows either them to reposition, or you have to move further for each brilliance token on you. Oh wow! Okay. So it's one of the few effects in the game that increases the overall potency of lores. So if you have three brilliance and you're move five, well, guess what? My lore is going to pull you eight. Nice. So that's really really massive. Um, I think they also have a bonus action that uh, denies the ability to interact by removing brilliance. Got it. But absolutely the number one thing that makes them insane is that when they're deployed, I get to pick a model in your crew to gain brilliance. That could be big. That's big. Yeah, that could be big. That's, That's big. painting the target right out of the right out of the game. Right. Or or more importantly for Lynch, who's a very fragile target, going, these two models are gonna have to work to hurt him. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. Very nice. How fragile? I mean, we talked, Lynch has got some fragility. How fragile is Huggy? Um, uh, not very. He's a henchman with decent wounds, yeah. decent defense and willpower. Um, terrifying. And, you know, of course, with terrifying, every time you try to do anything, you have to flip yep. that duel. So that can be dangerous to deal with. Um, and he's in core. And okay. That so, helps. which really helps against, like, the pulse damage. Like, you know, yep. he doesn't care about, you know, that type of stuff. So. Uh, generally speaking, they're pretty tough. Um, and then add in the, my third favorite model is Kitty Dumont. Her repositioning capabilities are absolutely, utterly obscene. 
She has um, an eight inch gun. So if you're engaged, you can't use it. And this is how you shut her down, actually. Uh -huh. That allows you to reposition them all six inches. But there's a trigger on it that lets you do another three inches. And then she places in base contact. Oh, that's nice. Okay. So you can reposition two miles in your crew turn one, for instance, yeah. like nine inches up the board if you got the triggers. And then she places next to one of them. So that allows you to control a little bit that mm -hmm. fragility that some of the other models have because she can be like, uh, I don't like you being engaged over here. You can come over here now. What kind of what kind of gamer, what kind of player is going to enjoy uh, Honey Pot and Jacob Lynch? Uh, if you like deck shenanigans, this is definitely a fun deck to play with. Um, you, every one of these models has the ability to look at those cards and put cards back. That's always a fun thing to do. Um, but, uh, and there's so much diversity in what the crew can do. Like we didn't even really talk about Grays and Tannen, but it's like, there are two other models that do completely different things, have repositioning, have board control effects. Uh, Gwyneth Maddox has more board control effects. That's the other henchman in, in Lynch. You have access to just so many cool little tools to be able to do. And then of course, who doesn't like nuking a model off the board and then getting a model for it? Right. Right. You know, so like if that statement alone makes you, you know, go, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> or if you just like the idea of playing, you know, a drug pusher who's actually doing something with the drugs that he's pushing. Like, that's kind of the thematic behind Lynch is that he's this ne'er-do-well that's going, hey, hey, do you want to try some of this? And then yeah. you're like, then you get hooked and now he's got his claws in you. That's cool. So it's like, it's just, it's a great flavorful crew that has a lot of, a lot of versatility. Dripping in theme. Yeah. Got it. Um, f uh, for a new player, is this a high learning curve, shallow learning curve? I feel it's actually a pretty shallow learning curve, Good. actually. it's it's the, the crew does what it does. You're stacking brilliance on models, and then you're using that brilliance to buff your ability to do things to pretty your straightforward. opponent. Pretty straightforward. The hard part about this crew is probably going to be the hiring process, yep. because... You want Gwyneth, but you want Kitty. You want Graves, and you want Tan. You want you know you want all the things, yeah. and you can't have all the things. Yeah. So that's where I feel like his crew really becomes. That's where the skill for his crew comes in. Is more in how you build the crew to deal with the threats that you see across the table. Um, playing the crew is is pretty straightforward, pretty straightforward and very enjoyable. Very very cool. All right, that's Jacob Lynch in the Honey Pot. Thanks for listening. Be sure to rate and write a review on this podcast so we can find more people almost as cool as you are. Check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube by searching for Third Floor Wars. That's T H I R D. We'll catch you next time on the Third Floor.